guitar's neck is one of the most important parts of an instrument. It has to withstand the string tension for many years and not distort with time. Mahogany is a great choice for neck wood because it's stable, it's lightweight, and it has stood the test of time on many traditional guitars. So first of all, with mahogany, you want to make sure that your grain is running vertically. If you look at the end of this board, it shows us that the grain is going this direction, which means it should really be this way. The fingerboard should either go on this surface or the opposite surface for the best strength, because those grain lines are stronger in this direction or more stable in that direction. So this is usually how I actually buy my uh, mahogany for neck blanks and it's just in a thick slab that I uh, saw up into several necks and I'll show you a few different ways of sawing up necks into uh, neck blanks from a, a slab. Most of my neck blanks to date have been made uh, like this so one piece uh, basically the heel is all part of the neck as well as the head so this is how I prefer to use the necks, um, just because it looks nice when you're, uh, you don't have a glue joint in the heel here, or multiple glue joints. The only thing about doing it this way is it is a little bit more wasteful as far as wood goes. So, um, and the glue lines are pretty much standard. It seems like it's pretty well accepted in the guitar uh, world these days, so not, uh, a concern just an aesthetic choice and I'm sure you know that the grain because the grain is going this way it's actually short grain on the head but I'm gonna be putting a veneer over the top and a pretty large volute on the back which will prevent it from uh, being too weak in that area where guitars often break um, but the other option is to do a scarf joint well which I'll show you as well so as far as cutting up this neck blank, um, I could have cut it up uh, with t making two necks out of this piece by laying one out like this and then flipping it over and laying one out like this and they just sort of end up uh, inside each other. Uh, that works well, but as you can see here, I'm actually going to be able to get four necks out of this if I can... Uh, if I have a piece of wood that's from the same board that I can use for heels to actually add the heels to these necks. But that's pretty efficient use of this lumber as you can as you can tell. There's not much waste. Planks like this will sit in my workshop for a couple of years. Um, it's nice to actually cut them out into their neck blanks and then leave them for a while. It's a good thing to do uh, beforehand so that you have stable necks to work with, not something that's going to change on you. The other option, and the least wasteful of the, of the options, is uh, to do a scarf joint and a stacked heel. The head angle uh, is sort of important because you don't want too much down pressure on the nut with the, with the strings, otherwise you can actually get friction issues and tuning issues. Um, but the standard for steel strings, I'm pretty sure it's 12 degrees, and that's what I do, 12 degrees. And that's for uh, standard steel string tuners. Um, if you're doing a nylon string or like a, a, a slot head, then the strings are actually going down into your, your peg head as opposed to staying above it. So you actually want a shallower angle. Um, so I usually go around 8 degrees, and that works well. Alright, so for a scarf joint, I want to figure out what parts of this neck I want to use. Um, this is bird's eye maple. The figure of bird's eye maple is always best right near the outside of the tree, so this is uh, closer to the outside of the tree. So I want to mark where the 14th fret is going to be. So I don't want to use this part of the, the board, so I'll stay away from that. Um, and then I'll mark the 14th fret, and there's going to be a 10 in past that, so I, I need to have that space. And then uh, mark the nut there. This is a slot head, so I want the angle to be about 8 degrees 
template like this is super handy for that because you just lay it on and and trace that angle. Um, just haven't made one yet. There's the nut. Want to cut it. Like so. Okay, so we basically have a, this is going to be the start of the neck. I'm going to flip this over and glue it onto the back side here and it's going to extend this way. Then I'll likely have an extra chunk here for part of a heel block and then uh, I might need to scrounge another piece from a, a different board to get the other heel block. This jig is just to hold the neck. Um, square to the the bandsaw blade so uh, if your neck blank is not quite square on the bottom edge you can't just sit it on your bandsaw table and cut freehand and even then you might wobble a little bit and it's going to be more work to clean up that edge so again this this jig was actually made for a 12 degree angle but uh, I can still use it for the 8 degree angle and freak cut through there. So at the 12 degree angle I can actually use the fence on the bandsaw and uh, put this in and it cuts perfectly um, straight on the cut. Before actually making the cut it's good to look at this and uh, make sure your neck is parallel to your bandsaw blade so if it won't cut uh, an angled wedge off of the neck as opposed to a straight wedge. This now has to get glued onto here so the next step is to actually flatten this because this is uh, right off the bandsaw. So I want to flatten this and uh, it is a bit tricky because this wants to sand differently because it's flexible near the end of the, of the wedge. First I want uh, a line going perpendicular to the edge here so I know I'm not sending my wedge more on one side than the other. Uh, you usually put a few just in case I sand through the first one. Um, gives you a good idea of what's going on. By holding a flat block onto the wedge, I can actually put that support on the very leading edge and uh, still keep this from uh, flexing near the end and uh, becoming not flat on the sanding side. So a block all the way to the end is advised uh, for getting pressure to that spot. Um, now it looks like I'm pretty good now. Um, Pretty happy with that. Looks nice and flat. Should be pretty easy to match up with the neck as long as the neck is flat and I'll check that next. I just checked the other side of this uh, scarf joint and it's wobbling a bit so I have to flatten that as well. But one thing to take into consideration when you do this is that you have to keep it flat uh, this way not tilt it either way and I guess it matters a little bit less when you're doing a veneer on the back side of your head but if you're not then you're gonna see that glue line just a little bit and if it's not if it's not straight across it's actually slanted one way or the other ever so slightly that glue line is gonna be angled on your the back of your headstock so making sure that's uh, the same thickness on either side um, is a good idea but again, if you're putting a head veneer on the back side of your head, then uh, it won't be, be visible anyways. So um, it's not a big concern as long as this is flat for this to actually meet up with. Okay, 
that's nice and flat now. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So that's going to meet up with this. And uh, once it's clamped down, it's going to be really nice, tight joint. The glue up is a little bit trickier because uh, these are both wedges. Um, so as soon as you clamp this, it's going to want to slide away from each other. So you need to be able to stop it from doing that. Um, and the way I do that is, first of all, you need something underneath your glue joint so you don't glue your neck to your workbench. It wouldn't be very useful that, that way. Um, I found that just uh, clamping it down to the workbench works nicely and then uh, as long as your neck is quite square, which um, seems like it is. Okay, so this side's not going anywhere. Uh, to stop this side from moving, I'm going to just clamp a block in place here where I want it. So I want it to... This surface I have not uh, sanded flat yet. So I want to leave it a little bit proud of, of this surface so that I can uh, flatten it with, with that. Um, so I'm going to clamp it right about there. There. Yeah, that looks good. Now I can clamp those together. Um, a couple considerations. When you're clamping this, it's hard to get the pressure right on the very tip of this because this is sort of flexible where it's thin. So I use blocks that go right close to the tip there and then uh, on either side. And then the rest is it's thick, so it's not going to need a block. This joint. It never has to come apart uh, in the future, so if you use a glue that's not reversible, that's fine. Way too much glue, as usual. Too much, better than too little. Okay. It's against the block, it won't go anywhere. Now it's just a matter of getting the clamps in the right spot and the pressure right to the ends here. If you alternate the direction of the clamps, um, the handles won't be in the way of each other. You can actually uh, tighten them a little bit more that way. There, so that's not going anywhere. I can now take these clamps off and uh, flip it over and finish clamping. That's going to be good. Nice. There we have it. That's good. That's it quite a while because that's a pretty big surface area. Okay, so we're almost there with this one. As you can see, this is actually uh, a little bit angled here. And you can tell over here because there's a bit of a ledge lip here and not over here. So this has to get sanded down a bit more on this side than that side. Um, but that's no big deal. I don't want to have to sand this whole area flat. So I'm going to figure out how far I need um, before I cut it off. So it's looking like I have plenty of extra space. Uh, I'll cut it right around the end of this uh, the scarf joint, then I'll, that'll give me lots to play with. And then uh, go from there.
next is to figure out where your heel block is going to go. So um, I, you need to know your scale length. Uh, so I'm using the scale length. Don't forget you have a, a space for your nut here. So like a five millimeter space. So from where this, this is now um, flattened to a perpendicular line uh, with the edge. So um, this is ready for the head plate. This is ready for the fingerboard um, and truss rod and carbon fiber. But uh, you want to find where your neck to body joint is going to be. And for mine, it's going to be over here. But you can't forget that there's the tenon as well. So you need wood past your neck to body joint because uh, your neck joint has to happen past there. Um, so I usually use this thing. Um, I give myself plenty of room to carve a heel. Um, so in this case, uh, so that was the 14th fret. And the tenon goes a half inch past that. So at least a half inch past you want that block. Um, glued. So obviously I want to transfer that to the back side because the block doesn't need to be where the fingerboard is supposed to go. And this neck is, is super wide right now, it's way wider than I need it, but uh, I could actually cut a chunk off and use it for a laminated neck later if I wanted to. That's almost four and a half, and I really only need three, but it's nice to have a bit of extra width to work with. You can work around any flaws in the wood. Okay, so I know that the heel block has to go to there. Um, this is going to be a couple layers, so I'm going to have to cut this block in half. Um, but basically, let's see the, the other. About a half inch. These little um, templates are so handy. This is just a a simple one for my heel cap shape, which um, makes <laughs> makes it very easy to reproduce a heel cap. This goes against the end of the neck, and then all I can all I have to do is trace out the heel shape um, on the center line, and then it's just a matter of carving to that line. Um, but this uh, tells me how far I need uh, this heel block minimum. Uh, at the the tallest part of the heel, so obviously I have a lot of room here. Um, I'm gonna double check to make sure. I might actually have to do four layers here, um, but my side is 90. The neck doesn't have to be the whole depth. So if I go 80, 80, millimeters, that's probably best. Yeah. So um, two blocks on top of each other will work. I'll just cut that in half. There we go. Um, so now I just have to glue them on top of each other. Um, it can be helpful to line up grain orientation. So uh, here's a, here's a good uh, thing to notice. I want to work around this, obviously. Um, but if I put that to the the top here, my heel's only going to be up to here, so so I can cut that off. No big deal. Um, flattening these, I'm just going to kiss these to the belt sander if they need to be flattened. Looks like they do. Um, and then I have a, a nice uh, surface to glue together there. These are now sanded. I just have to add the glue and clamp it up. Make sure it doesn't slide everywhere. It's going to want to slide everywhere when I start clamping, so it's a little awkward at first.
too worried about side to side. I've got plenty of width to work with. So now you have a neck length that you can work with and fit to your guitar and start working on truss rods, uh, carbon fiber, whatever, uh, head plates. But I hope that was a good explanation of how I do scarf joints and uh, use up those uh, boards that aren't uh, thick enough to do this with. Obviously this is easier because you just cut it out on the bandsaw, but uh, this is less wasteful and you can use some pretty wild woods uh, by doing scarf joints like this. So hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments.